Good evening and welcome to AYM's latest online event. My name is Tom Redmond and I'm delighted to be your compere this evening. I'm Joint Principal of Cheatham School of Music in Manchester. Chets and AYM have been working together for a long time. AYM have supported many of our students with help for their musical costs and we do all we can to give back too. We're looking forward to hosting one of AYM's Furthering Talent Get Together events later this year. Students from the Bradford, Manchester City and Greater Manchester programmes will meet at Chets for a day of fun activities exploring practice, rhythm, composition and well-being. I'll be leading one of those sessions too. So I've been working here at Chets since September 2019. Prior to that, I spent nearly two decades working in the orchestral profession, 14 years as a member of the Halle Orchestra, and then several years as a freelance musician, working up, down, left, right, all over the country, both as a performer and also devising and creating concerts for schools and families, programming those for many of the UK's orchestras. I also work as a broadcaster for BBC Radio 3, presenting live concerts from concert halls across the UK. I couldn't have done any of those things had it not been for my musical training. That, that enabled me to meet and be inspired by so many extraordinary people. And I was very lucky that I grew up at a time when music lessons were essentially free. I'm the youngest of five siblings, and without the old county award system, there's no way that four of the five of us would have entered the music profession. By the way, that makes it sound like the fifth one meant to, but didn't. The fifth sibling is uh, one of the world's great conservationists, my eldest brother, Ian Redmond. He never wanted to be a musician, he wanted to save the apes. Well, musical talent is everywhere, but more than ever, opportunity isn't. Family finances and other obstacles too often get in the way. AYM is here to change this. Now, it's great that so many of AYM's wonderful supporters are able to be here this evening. Now, if you're new to AYM, we hope this event will inspire you to get involved. If you'd like to chat during the show, the AYM team is standing by on Twitter. Please use the hashtag giving talent a chance. Now, coming up tonight, we'll be hearing from AYM young musicians at three different stages of their musical journeys. First up is Cody from Bradford, who plays the cornet. She's in the early days of her musical journey with AYM, having been nominated for their Furthering Talent programme in 2019. We'll then hear performances by two teenage musicians, flautist Erika Kaderian and the harpist David Ingham. As more advanced players, they receive support through AYM's award programme. And finally, we'll introduce you to AYM's second alumni patron, who's embarking on an exciting career in music. So we begin with furthering talent. AYM works in partnership with 15 music education hubs across England to identify and support young people with musical potential from low-income families who could otherwise not afford to learn an instrument after state funding ends. We're focused on the transition years from primary to secondary school when many children are forced to drop out of music making, each young musician gets a weekly instrumental lesson and wider support for their musical progression, including an individual learning plan where they work with their teachers to set their own musical goals. A local furthering talent coordinator works in each region to ensure that young musicians get all the support they need to make the most of their potential. They work closely with parents, teachers, and a range of other professional musicians and organisations. We're delighted to share a recent conversation between Cody and AYM local coordinator for Bradford, Helen Borg. So, how are you today, Cody? I'm good. Yeah, good. Did you have a good day at school? Yeah, it's been fine. You were the first person in Bradford on the Furthering Talent Scheme. When I spotted your your sound, that was the thing that I went, wow, she's got to do something with that sound. What would you say are some of your highlights? The trips that we went on, the uh, adventures. What were some of your favourite ones? One's definitely the snowman. We got to listen in the orchestra. Underneath the, yeah. the, the film of the snowman, didn't we? 
I don't know how old he was, but he was standing up on the stage and they were doing that really, really, really good opera. Ah, so the, the, the guy who was singing The Walking in the Air. Yeah. And we got to go backstage as well, didn't we? Do you remember? Do you remember sitting on the conductor's chair? Yeah. Can you think of any of any of the other get-togethers? I can't remember what it's called. It's a really, really, really big school for music. Ah, when we went to the Royal Northern College of Music, yeah. Yeah, in Manchester. What did you like about going there? It was just so big, and there were loads to explore, and uh, we got to go in like different rooms of where people. Play. Do you, do you think do you think now that you could go to a place like that when you're older? Yeah. Two years ago, did you think you could go to a place like that? No. So you think you've you've gone from not not thinking that you can to 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 definitely thinking you can. But hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I think you can, Cody. I think you can. And I think that's one of the biggest changes that I've spotted in you is that, you know, your playing is more fluent and you're, you're playing beautifully and you're progressing great on your trumpet. But actually now you believe that you can do things with your music and you've really, really developed as a, as a more confident person, haven't you? Yeah. One of the, one of the things that I remember as well is when you as part of one of your targets you set yourself a target to do a zoom concert didn't you and you did the zoom concert for some family and friends and then some of the elderly people that that your mum works with what what did you have to do to set that concert up well we had to figure out when we were doing it who were coming what time we were going to be at also with the like links and everything practicing and and then also you worked with your sister Courtney who's now got a place on the scheme as well and you played some play some duets with Courtney as well didn't you yeah do you think you and Courtney both being on the scheme the sisters do you think that's a nice thing to share yeah because like she knows if she needs any help with anything or like if She's struggling on a certain piece of music. I can always help her in that she don't have to be scared. With Because she's a little bit scared about playing on stage and things like that. I think her confidence has grown, grown a bit, but obviously you've still got to work on it a bit more. If you don't like know the people you're playing for, you, it feels like you got to impress them like straight away and that, you know, you need to set a good impression for yourself. But actually, it's just about kind of standing there and being confident about what you can do, isn't it? It's been over two years now since you've been on the scheme. It seems, it feels like two days. Done really quickly. And do you think you've changed as a musician? I feel like I've changed a lot. I can definitely play like more fluently. Yeah, and you've got that big sound on your trumpet, haven't you, as well? You had a, a chat with one of your mentors from AYM. Is it Matthew? I think, was he talking to you about music jobs, working within the community? And I think that was something that he touched on that you said you'd really like to get involved with. What is it about using your music to help other people? What what would you like to get out of that? Helping other people, it sets a good impression on you and people are learning. How do you think music does help people? It helps me because it's just calming to me, even though the trumpet is a loud piece of music. Do you mean that you, like, use it to, like control your emotions almost with it and you and you think that other people could use it like that too yeah it's been lovely chatting to you cody so i will see you next week at your lesson yeah. don't forget to practice what
AYM is currently helping 500 young people like Cody through furthering talent. With more funding, AYM could reach even more children to help them sustain and develop their music making. AYM is taking part in this year's Champions for Children campaign to raise funds for their furthering talent program in Lewisham, one of the areas where the program is running. If you're able to contribute or know someone who can, please visit the link at the bottom of the screen. Donations up to 12 noon on Tuesday, 15th of June, will be doubled with gift aid added to. The plan is to raise £22,800. Any contributions would be appreciated. Thank you. AYM is also currently supporting nearly 200 young musicians through its awards programme. Young musicians making music in any genre from anywhere in the UK can apply for an award if their family is on a low income. The programme is aimed at those who are showing the potential, technical ability and passion to take their music to a higher level. With the right support, whether they're already being helped by AYM's Furthering Talent Programme or whether they find out about the awards through AYM's network of partners. AYM supports young people with flexible funding for their music and helps them gain confidence, connections and community through meeting and making music with their talented peers. Kwasi Sefer Atakora and his sister Mama Ya began their musical journey as participants in AYM's Furthering Talent Programme in Greater Manchester. Both went on to be AYM award winners and received support to access more advanced musical training and instruments. And I'm delighted to say they're both now studying and thriving with us here at Cheatham's. An even more recent arrival at Chet's is 10-year-old clarinetist and AYM award winner, Shear. He's just received his new AYM-funded clarinet, which is going to make a huge difference to his musical life. Well, now it's time for some music, I think. I'm delighted to introduce 14-year-old flautist Erica Kadarian from London. She's in her second year as an AYM award winner and uses her funding to attend the Junior Royal Academy of Music. You can read more about Erica's musical life in her performer biography. Erica is going to play the concertino by Cécile Chaminade. Chaminade's career spanned the latter part of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th. She was a trailblazer, an extremely prolific composer. One of her most enduring works is this concertino for flute and piano, the combination, in fact, that this was originally conceived for. It was only later that Chaminade orchestrated it. It has become a mainstay of the flute player's repertoire and it's not difficult to understand why. Hello, I'm Erica Kudarian and I'm going to be playing Concertino by Cecile Chaminade. I love this piece and I've always wanted to play it since I first started learning the flute. I learned this piece during lockdown um, around a year ago, but I never got to play it with an accompanist. It's a really exciting and expressive and contrasting piece and it's just so enjoyable to play. I'm so happy that I can finally perform this piece um, in this concert. Thank you. Thank you. 
Erica, thank you. Well, next up is 15-year-old harpist David Ingham from Swansea. AYM are supporting David's harp lessons. He's recently progressed from lever to pedal harp, a natural progression for any young harp player. The lever harp is the instrument that many young harpists begin on before moving to the pedal harp. Not entirely necessary, one could continue a whole and fulsome musical life with the lever harp. The pedal harp allows musicians to explore all the repertoire, particularly in the orchestral genre that has been composed for that instrument. It's also a huge commitment for parents, because with a pedal harp normally comes the need for an estate car. Well, David is also a very talented composer. He was recently crowned overall winner of the 2021 Commonwealth International Composition Award. His piece, The Ants, was selected from hundreds of compositions by young composers from all around the world. Well, David is going to play Gitana by Alphonse Assalmont. David will introduce the piece himself. Hi, my name is David. I'm 15 and I come from Swansea. I've been playing the harp for five years and this is my first year being supported by the AYM who have helped fund harp lessons during lockdown. Today I'm going to be playing Gitana by Hasselmans. I enjoy playing this piece because it's dramatic and really fun to play. It also shows off the wide range of techniques and sounds the harp provides. <laughs>
David, thank you very much. Well, those who joined AYM for their online event in April may remember the hosts and alumni trustees, Mahalia and Kaius, mentioning that we'd be introducing you to AYM's newest patron at this event. Well, that moment has arrived. I'm delighted to tell you that AYM's new patron is jazz pianist Dechanel Gordon. Born in Hackney, Dechanel was supported by AYM's Furthering Talent program in the early days of his musical journey from 2019 to 2013. AYM funded his jazz piano lessons and connected him with a fantastic mentor, the professional jazz pianist Steve Lodder. In 2020, he graduated from Trinity Laban with first class honours and won the prestigious BBC Young Jazz Musician competition. In his new role as alumni patron, Dechanel will support AYM's work in a range of ways, from leading masterclasses for young jazz musicians to performing on the charity's behalf. In his first act as alumni patron, Dechanel led an online session for young people currently supported by AYM just last week. We're delighted to share some of the highlights with you now. music from around seven years old and I think the beginning stages was in the church so a lot of gospel music like my mum was a is a big gospel fan and, and she sings as well so every Sunday the pastor at the church would I'd be really small at that point would sit next to me and, and he would play and I would kind of watch his fingers like didn't know what's going on but I was watching and trying to observe and over time you would let me go and after church he'd show me a few things and I think at that point he realised I had some well, some sort of gift I guess because I was learning quite quickly at that age. The music I was playing, there's no sheet music. I mean it's much like it's helped me how I approach jazz now but there's no sheet music so it was very much into singers can be singing, they could be in tune, they could be out of tune. It's my job to find the correct chords to match. So doing that from like eight years old really strengthened my ear. At 10 years old, I was watching BBC Four and there was this amazing piano player just playing all this stuff and it was blowing my mind. I was in awe and I didn't know who it was at the time. But then about a year later, I found out it was Oscar Peterson. I think he's a piano god. I mean, he's definitely top five piano players to live ever. So he, he was the first and he got me into jazz. I went to this summer course and they had this little talent show thing in Hackney and I, I was like, let me play some piano. At that point, I didn't know what I was playing, but later on I was told it was a blues. I won the competition and the prize was I could get some jazz piano lessons. I had my first jazz piano lesson, I think in year six, from a piano teacher called Chris Wilson and he moved to me and he followed me to when I went to a secondary school, so Mossbourne Community Academy. A teacher called Sarah Denton was an amazing teacher and so encouraging. She saw that as this young uh, 11 year old boy who couldn't do anything but play piano. I didn't care about anything else. And, and she said, and she, I needed to realise that I also needed some help, especially financially with the lessons and, on, um, so I can I have lessons at, at the school. So I think through her, she, she, she contacted AYM and they were able to fund my lessons um, from, from like year seven up to year 11, I think. So I'm from Hackney. So there's a, a group called Hackney Creative Jazz Ensemble. I was there from around year eight to, to year 11. And it was an amazing experience because that was the first time I realized I'm not alone. I, I thought I was, that weird guy, you know, geeky guy who's into jazz at such a young age. And none of my friends listen to jazz. I mean, that was the last thing on their mind, though, football and rap music and stuff. And I still love that stuff, but I was firmly obsessed with this thing called jazz. So when I went to this, the, to like the youth jazz thing, I, I was really surprised. I was like, okay, there's other people like me, they exist, I'm not alone. And that was an amazing like, thing to find out. Then also I got introduced to another youth jazz um, group and it was Julian Joseph Jazz Ensemble. And um, 
yeah, going there was was a was a level up because it was just full of like you know British legends, and it was like I was happy to be there and, and to learn from them. Around yeah, yeah, thirteen, I decided to we had to decide what we wanted to do for university, and I, I mean. I did biology, but I knew I wasn't going to do that for university. And I was doing psychology and I wasn't going to do that. So I was like, I think everyone always knew what I was going to pick anyway. So I, I went and decided to audition for some conservatoires and I got into Trinity, which was amazing. And so I, I made so much friends being here the last, the last four years. Great question. Um, I think for me, I always get nervous, but it's it's always before I get to the piano. Like once I'm at the piano, I'm like, I'm here, all right, there's nothing else I can do. So you want to be able to kind of always narrow narrow down your, your thought process or be able to focus. So for my thing is, especially in jazz music, which is improvised and it relies on me having to have a clear mind to be able to react really quickly. I just try and really focus on what I'm actually hearing from the musicians. Because if you really focus on the music, everything else is, is there, but that becomes more of a blur. You're more like focused on, on creating something. In jazz or any music, there's like a songbook, you'd say, like of common songs that people know. So in folk, there may be some songs in rock, there's some common, so in jazz, um, they have the Great American Songbook, which is comprised of a lot of songs from musical theatres, so around songs at the time, so Broadway and the popular hits of that time, a lot of jazz musicians would play and it would become well known and become like standard repertoire. Yeah, I'd say the first thing is, is just listen. I mean, Listen, find something that you like. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you understand, but something that just your ear wants to, is drawn to. And from there, I think it will naturally happen because once once the jazz bug bites, you like it's over from there. But I think finding something you like, you will naturally, you know, you naturally be drawn to learning more about about it. I'm also really pleased to let you know that DeChanel will be performing at another AYM event later this year. So watch this space for more news soon. Well, as you heard tonight, AYM gives the right help at the right time to inspire and support young musicians to fulfill their musical potential and to enjoy rich musical lives. Here's a word from one of AYM's other wonderful patrons. Hello. I'm Julian Lloyd Webber and I'm delighted to have been a patron of Awards for Young Musicians for many years. AYM's work is important to me because I believe that every child should have access to music. Musical talent is everywhere, but the opportunity to make the most of that talent isn't, and Awards for Young Musicians is here to change that. Thanks to AYM's amazing supporters, we're now helping more than 700 talented young musicians from low-income families across the UK to fulfil their potential. This is a fantastic achievement. The last year has been challenging for all of us, but AYM has responded wonderfully, adapting its programmes so that young musicians can continue to make music together. But still, there are many more young musicians that we're not yet reaching. Young musicians who live and breathe music, but who struggle to pay their musical costs and are missing out on the wide range of opportunities that AYM provides. If you're able to help us change this, we'd love to hear from you. So please do take a look at our website, a-y-m.org.uk, to get a flavour of the work AYM is doing for talented young musicians. Thank you. As Julian says, do visit AYM's website to find out more about the charity's work, none of which would be possible without AYM's supporters, individual donors, trusts and foundations, public funders and legators. As I mentioned earlier, AYM has been chosen to take part in this summer's Champion for Children match funding campaign. They're raising funds to support 30 places for young musicians on their Furthering Talent programme, run in partnership with Lewisham Music. 
Thanks to support from the Childhood Trust and other kind AYM supporters, AYM can match fund funding of £11,400. Each donation made between now and midday on Tuesday 15th of June will be doubled until they hit their grand total of £22,800. Click the link below to donate now. Or perhaps you could help through a regular gift. You become an AYM champion for £5 a month. Or if you'd like to give at a higher level, please consider becoming an AYM angel from £84 a month. Find out more to set up your donation via the links below. You can join AYM's mailing list there too. And please do tell your friends about AYM. The new AYM page is the best place to go for information to share with others. Whatever help you can give would be brilliant. Thank you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's event. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. And from me in Baronial Hall in Manchester City Centre, it's goodbye for now. Bye.